Hello and welcome to the BMC Quick Course Series. My name is Dave Levy and I'm a lead developer based in Atlanta, Georgia. In this session we will go over how a set base is used and how to manage rule sets using the new rules management. Set bases, also known as rule set bases, provide a way to organize your rule sets into logical groups. This may be done by geographical location, client, business unit, or whatever makes sense for your enterprise. A set base name has two parts. The first is the 1 to 32 character ID and the second is the 1 to 8 character group name. Having two parts to the name provides additional flexibility when using set bases. It is not required, however, to use more than one set base. When the registry is initialized, a default set base is created for you. It is named default default. You are free to use this set base as the only set base if you have no need for more. This is a sample of the set base view. It shows the list of all set bases and some basic properties of each set base found in the registry. You may have as many set bases as you need. From this view, you would use the select line command to drill down to see the rule sets in the set base. Using the select line command or the switch line command sets the set base as the default to be used by other views that need a set base. You can see which set base is currently set as the default by inspecting the column labeled default. A value of yes indicates which set base is the default. Here we see a list of the primary and line commands available on the set base view. As mentioned, the select line command is used to set the default set base and then drill down to the rule set view to manage rule sets. The switch line command also changes the default set base. The show children line command is primarily meant to be used when running the user interface with Main View Explorer. The show children line command presents a graphical chart of the rule sets related to the selected set base. Rule sets are pretty much the same as they have always been. Only the storage medium has been changed along with how they can be managed and shared. The rule sets are now members of a set base. Any one rule set can only be a member of one set base. In terms of usage, it makes no difference what set base a rule set is associated with when it comes time to use the rule set in a PAS. The PAS def, which was discussed in an earlier quick course, can have rule set members from any number of different set bases. The rule set, as it is defined in the new rules management paradigm, is a reference object that has properties of its own as well as an association with rules linked to the rule set as members. A rule set's properties include the same rule set filter as used in the past, along with the strategy for the rule set. The rule set's strategy is only used when the PAS itself is using a strategy of individual. The associated list of rules, which we will talk about a little later, is a WYSIWYG list that defines the sequence the rules should be loaded into a PAS. A key point to remember in the new paradigm is that rules are no longer physically stored in a PDS member as part of the rule set. The rules that are members of any rule set are now logical members. This enables you to share common rules in multiple rule sets as needed without the need to duplicate the rule and incur the pain in managing duplicate copies of the rule. The divorcing of the rule from the rule set is also a key factor in how rules can now be deployed and activated independently from the rule set. For more information on deployment, there is another quick course that is focused solely on that subject. This is an example of the rule set view. It shows an alphabetically arranged list of all the rule sets along with each rule set's properties found in the selected set base. Commands are provided to manage the list of rule sets as well as the properties of the rule set. Notice also that the last change columns have hyperlinks on them. Invoking the hyperlink in any of the last change columns will show the change history for the rule set. We now capture a history of the last 10 changes made to the rule set. Each change can be documented with a reason if desired. Here we see a list of the primary and line commands available on the rule set view. The RM line command is used to drill down to the list of rules that are members of the rule set. Commands are provided to manage a rule set's properties, to research what PAS defs are using the rule set, and to add a new rule set to one or more PAS defs as needed. When the RM line command is used on the rule set view, a list of the rules that are members of the rule set is displayed. This is a sample of the R set S member view. Notice the rule set, set base, and group are shown in the heading information along with the reason for the last change found in the change history. Below that is a tabular list of the rules in WYSIWYG sequence. The sequence the rules are shown is the exact sequence the rules will be loaded into the PAS during a cold start. From this view, you can use line commands to reorder the rules, add new rules, edit rules, remove rules, and much more. 
Also notice in the Windows bar the word Browse. This tells you that the view is currently in Browse mode. To make any changes to the properties of a rule set, you must first switch the view to Edit mode using the Edit primary command. Once in Edit mode, you can use a large variety of line commands to manage the rule set. Be aware, however, that leaving this view before using the Save primary command will result in the loss of the changes. Here we see a list of the primary and line commands available in the RSETS member view. Of note in this list of commands are the commands associated with the notion of a pool of rules becoming a member of the rule set. In the new paradigm, it is no longer required to enumerate every rule that you want associated with a rule set if the sequence of the rules in the rule set is not important. In this case, you can associate all the rules in a rule pool with a rule set by simply inserting the rule pool as a member of the rule set. This is where commands such as insert p, ip, and expand come into play. These are special commands to insert a rule pool and to inspect the contents of the rule pool. Using this technique can greatly simplify rules management when the sequence of the rules in a rule set is unimportant. For more information about rule pools, please see the quick course about rules and rule pools. Lastly, I'd like to show you how the rule sets contained in one or more set bases are used in a PASDEF. As you can see, one or more rule sets from any set base can be added to a PASDEF for use by a PAS. Notice that not all rule sets in a set base need be included in a PAS. Also notice that the sequence the rule sets are loaded into the PAS is controlled by the PASDEF, not by the set base. There is a quick course about using PASDEFs if you need more information about the PASDEF. Thank you for your time. For more information on any BMC mainframe product, please visit the URL shown here.